Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animal Orange, and welcome to another Metal Earth build video. Today we're going to work on the Weasley's home, the Burrows, from Harry Potter. And this, as you may have noticed, is the color version. It is a Books A Million exclusive that I picked up some time back and hadn't gotten around to building it until now. From what I have seen, it builds exactly the same as the silver version. There is no difference. The only thing I've seen different in the instructions is there's a little bit more of a warning on this one, but no practical difference as far as building it and whatnot. But let's go over to the table, open up the packaging, see what's inside, and put this thing together. All right. Let us open up the Burroughs Weasley Family Home Exclusive Color Edition from Books A Million. It's a nice little box, but I doubt it's full. It's probably some extra room packaging. Yeah. Nothing more than what you'd find in a regular model, really. Got our two pieces of paper for the instructions. Set that to the side and we have a nice little clip dealy. Hold it on to the sheets. This is just nice looking cardboard hollow back. No big surprise there. We have two metal sheets with all the pieces for this model. Lost my words for a second there. I'm going to put these back to back again so that they don't scratch the paint. Off to the side, we're going to talk somewhat briefly, if I can, about the instructions in case you're new to building these kits, these models. Go over the instructions a little bit. We're going to find the piece of paper that has a Metal Earth logo on it. Open that up all the way. Let's see if we might have to zoom out just a little bit more here. Just got through building a short time ago and had it all zoomed in. So starting at the first page, we got the Metal Earth logo, an outline of the model in one of the sheets. The Burroughs Weasley Family Home. We got a 360 view QR code or website. Two different ways you can get to where you can see a 360 view of the completed model should you wish to see it or need it for reference sake. We have a sample part with a notation on insertion tabs, insertion holes, and fold lines. Fold lines are just pre-scored areas where parts fold. Tabs ultimately go in holes. That's how all of this is held together. And we have a legend here starting with the E in a circle that's usually pointing at the engraved side or colored side or section of a part so you know which way to face it. Any points at the non-engraved side or section or non-colored side. Don't get fold lines mixed up with engraving. That can happen sometimes. A tension point. When you see that, it's usually telling you about some sort of alignment issue. Make sure this is aligned with that. Though it can have wording with it for a special case. It can really vary. It's something you just need to pay attention to. You do this this way. Blue circle, when you see that next to a connection point, it means to insert a tab and fold it 90 degrees. We have some examples over here. Green triangle means to insert a tab and twist it 90 degrees. We've got a green triangle here. The twisted tabs are more secure but not as clean looking. The folded tabs are cleaner looking but not as secure, generally speaking. You usually see the folded ones on the outside of parts. Twisted tabs on delicate or parts that need to be secure inside. A bit about tools over here. We're going to talk about tools in a moment. And down below we have an outline of the two different sheets and numbers surrounded. I'm going to grab one of these sheets back over here. Let's see which one did I grab. It looks like I've grabbed this sheet A. I quit accidentally knocking the paper around. So, first of all, you notice that there's an A and a B. So the sheets are labeled A, sheet A, and sheet B. And then you have part numbers. We also have some letters which is interesting. That doesn't show up often, but sometimes you will see lettering in the instructions indicating parts. Don't see any numbers or letters on the parts. That sometimes happens. But you also notice that some parts are colored in while most aren't. The parts that are colored in are duplicate parts. They're the same part and they go in more than one place. This model doesn't have a lot of duplicate parts, but it's also not a very symmetric model, so that doesn't surprise me. So a lot of these are going to be completely unique parts, but say over here we've got part 22. This is also part 22. There's two of them. They're used in two different places for whatever reason. 
they only number the one they don't number the other because it's colored it, it makes finding the duplicate carts easier to find i like that they do that sliding over to page two we have the start of the assembly flow chart starting with part one which is on sheet b so we go over to here to sheet b find part one there it is clip it out and it comes down here this bit here in the front is highlighted red and you see arrows kind of out and down and out and back so that part is folded down and the sides folded back over here the rest of the outer edge is highlighted in red with arrows indicating to fold that down you end up with that next line we've got part two which is on sheet a there's a odd little fold here which we're going to have to carefully try and figure out when we get to it more fold in here, more fold in here. It looks like that might be a little challenging to figure out what they mean, but I'm going to do my best. But you just go down, clipping out the parts, folding it as indicated, and then eventually you start attaching parts together. Sometimes you'll have little sub-assemblies showing more detail. You get to the bottom of this page, you jump over to the next page, part three, continue on, then part four, once you get to part four, bottom of that you grab the next piece of paper open it up find page five then six then seven then eight and once you get to the bottom you're done with your model let's take a moment to talk about some tools and i've got what i consider the basic set in front of me starting with a pair of flush clippers or side clippers these are primarily used to cut the parts out of the sheets you can get the parts out by folding and twisting though you run the risk of breaking something you didn't mean to break a good pointed set of side cutters or Flush cutters, like this Play-Doh set that I've got here, work really great for quickly getting the parts out so you can get on with your build. I have, of course, a small selection of tweezers. We've got a fairly basic set. This actually came with one of the older Iconics sets, and I've been using it for quite a while. But a good sturdy, flat-end tweezers can come in really handy for doing a great number of things. I also have a few pieces from a precision set of tweezers. If you need some precision tweezers, just search precision tweezers online. You'll be able to find something out there. These two are very similar. They have a very fine point, though I did grind the tip of these down to help me grab tabs. And then this is just kind of a flat set for getting in tight spaces. And then we have a couple of pieces left over from the Fascinations three-piece set. I broke the clippers long ago, so I had to replace them. But we have long nose pliers and flat nose pliers. Really handy. These are handy for bending long parts and these are handy for bending short sections right here but this is the basic set we'll do a great amount of things with just this set right here you'll be able to build a lot of different models and do a lot of different things i have this angled needle nose pliers right here that i believe i brought at harbor freight but not too hard to find angled needle nose pliers these are handy for bending semi-long parts in tight places where you can come at it with at an angle and occasionally getting into weird places to twist a tab. We've talked about some tools. I've got the basics to get me started here. I've got my metal sheets out, my instructions kind of at the ready. I'm going to organize things a little bit and we'll get started building this model.
When I looked at the instructions, I remember being a little confused and concerned about how parts 2, 3, and 4 have some odd little bit that bends and twists, but now that I see the part, it makes perfect sense. There's a little arm that swings down and a tab that goes into a slot and acts as sort of a support structure. These connections holding the side pieces together were fiddly, and as you can see, sometimes came apart. I kept at it, and as more of the structure came together, it became more sturdy.
To hold part 6 on, I ran the tip of the pointed tweezers between the tabs to push them apart and fold them over. I of course gave each tab an extra pinch down. I forgot to fold up the top bit. I also started to put these two together in the wrong order and fortunately the tabs are offset so I cannot accidentally do that. The instructions have you pair up the roof tops into halves and then put the two halves together. Getting all the tabs lined up was a small challenge with the top bit at a different angle. I wonder if it would have been easier to build the roof a piece at a time and if the struggle of just adding the last piece would have been less of a struggle than adding the two halves to each other or if it would have been more difficult. To help putting the roof on, I bent the tips of the tabs at the top at a slightly outward angle. It really helps them to slide into their slots. Well, it looks like I need to hold the center part when folding the sides or else it will bend improperly.
Two of the tabs holding this part on are easy to see, but a bit difficult to fold over. We still have a window to add to the lower floor, but for whatever reason, the instructions don't get around to that till near the end.
The last bit of shaping part 19, where you add on part 20, which appears to be steps, shows adding the steps, then folding the flap they are on in. The problem with that is the steps will catch on one of the side bits or poles and won't fold in. So to avoid that, I folded the flap in, then added the steps, which made it a bit more difficult to fold over the connecting tabs, but not impossible. For the chimney topper bit, the instructions hint to fold the tabs outward, assumedly on parts 22 and 23. I agree and use the pointed tweezers to sort of shove in between pushing the tabs out and over.
Well, that warped easily, but I guess I should not have been surprised. That could have gone better, but that could have gone worse. The instructions indicate to leave this assembly open a bit, so I did. This house is obviously not meant to be straight.
This bit on the chimney is wobbly, so off camera I dropped a drop of Loctite glue on it and set it to the side to sure it up. And now for that window on the first floor that we waited for for some reason. And that brings us to the end of this particular build. Pretty straightforward and easy to put together. I was a little concerned about some of the bottom four pieces and little hinges that hang off, but once I started putting together, it was pretty obvious and straightforward what was going on here. It assembles into a rather crooked, wonky looking building, but I mean, that's kind of how it is in the movie. So I'd say that's pretty spot on. Only took an hour and a half to put this entire model together fairly simple use of tools just your basic tweezers and, and some pliers to put it together no cone shapes no cylinder shapes no rounding of stuff just a lot of angles and folding and bending pretty straightforward and pretty simple this was a easy surprisingly easy build i wasn't sure what to expect from it but i enjoyed it and it came together fairly simple and it's i love that it's got a built accent of color to it i've not built the silver version i don't have it but I'm glad that I went with this one because I, I really am, for the most part, enjoying the colors on these models. I do think it adds a lot of character and detail to it, and I'm, I'm really enjoying this one. Stay tuned for the review video coming up soon, though I don't think there's a whole lot to talk about. Again, it came together pretty straightforward and simple, especially compared to some of the things I've been doing lately. We'll leave it at that. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for continuing to support this channel. And as always, keep on keeping on.